Hey guys, welcome back to Jade Empire. We are here in Tian's Landing talking to its uh, de facto leader, Minister Sheng. Uh, I think he had a few more things to talk about, so let's get those out of the way so we can do some more exploring and maybe even find some action. And again you bother me! Is there no end? Did you find the controls to the Great Dam? You must close the Great Dam. Not that I said anything about that, of course. <laughs> right. Uh, I have some questions for you. Well, I think that is wonderful. Let's sit and chat while the sky falls all around us. Along with my career! <laughs> Bioware is very good at giving even simple, minor, or relatively minor characters their own distinct personality. He might not be the deepest character in the world, but he is a character. Um, to do... I want to ask you something else. Certainly. I'm curious about you, Minister Sheng. Ah, my favorite subject. Ask and Sheng, Imperial Minister of Harmony for this entire region, will let you bask in the glory that is... me. So modest. <laughs> Doesn't this entire region just consist of this town? Don't... why... how dare... Yes, you are right. I am minister of this bleeding pus pool of a town. And yes, it is because I am in disfavor. Makes sense. Are you through? Because you haven't yet picked on my appearance or my family history. Why stop short of completely obliterating the last little bit of dignity to which Minister Sheng <laughs> clings? I almost feel bad now. Almost. Um, and I'm astonished that he would have incurred a disfavor with somebody in the Imperial City. He probably just annoyed them to death. And that's why he was sent out here. So, what does the Ministry of Harmony do? Woe to Sheng that his sole ally is an uneducated simpleton. The Ministry of Harmony oversees taxes and executions for this entire region. I like how the Minister, Ministry of Harmony is like the two most non-harmonious things, or discordant things, imaginable. Uh, kind of Orwellian in that sense, where the ministries are named after the opposite of what they actually are. So, why were you sent to Tian's Landing? Judge Fang, the Chief Minister of Harmony. He didn't want me anywhere near the seat of power. He sent me here, an exile as unjust as any in the history of the Empire. Judge Fang, we will meet him later. So, why did he do that? Jealousy! You see, by the rosters of the Imperial bureaucracy, I am next in line for Fang's job. It was really? only a matter of time until Minister Sheng ascended to his position. Fang does not think much of me, so he banished me to this remote branch of the Ministry of Harmony. Now one of his lackeys will take my rightful position as his successor. I'm actually really surprised this guy was in line for the top job of the Ministry of Harmony for the entire Empire. Um... But, who knows, like I said, maybe he is smarter than he looks. I'm also not sure how much we can actually help him, but, um... From what I remember of Judge Fang, I think I would, uh, definitely prefer this guy to be in charge instead of him. Even if he is, uh, a bit of an idiot. So, why are you standing here in front of a cart? The shame! Since the Great Dam opened and the lake drained, there has been a ship trapped in port and the sailors are growing increasingly rowdy. Some of them got drunk and set fire to the Ministry of Harmony's office. That is the ruin of it over there. He's still smoking. Someone should do something about these sailors. What can be done? The sailors want to leave as badly as the town wants them gone. But until the dam is closed, their ship isn't going anywhere. It's a very believable I'm predicament. I'm sure Captain Ng down by the pier would offer you some sort of reward to close the Great Dam and free his ship. That is what we in the Ministry of Harmony call a hint. Well, I was going to uh, close the dam anyway for my own reasons, but um, I guess now we can get a reward for it too. So we get a reward from the ship guy, we get to save the town, and we get to kill a bunch of Lotus Assassins. This is almost too good to be true. Uh, I think that is about all there is. Great dam. Uh, I need information about the town. Oh, please, ask away. 
Minister Sheng, that Imperial Minister Sheng of the Ministry of Harmony has nothing better to do than act as your guides to local customs. I think the mayor, essentially the mayor, would be more welcoming. Tell me the history of this town. Minister Sheng may be banished to this festering boil of a town, but I refuse to learn anything of its history. There is far too much for me to worry about as it is. What a man of the people. Ask your questions of the old fool who crouches on the north side of the square, muttering to himself about the old days. I expect we'll get to him. I just hope he doesn't speak, though, fan. Um, something else? The sh Do I want to ask you about the Empire. It is true I am knowledgeable and well-traveled. Very well, let me elucidate. What do you think of the Emperor? A giant among men. Superb. The best emperor ever. Surely he will soon allow me to return to the Imperial City. Surely. How about that sand? Of course I hold all the Emperor's advisors in the highest esteem. Death's hand serves the Emperor, as do we all. He is a trifle uh, terrifying, however. But I respect him. Oh, yes, I respect him so very... Very much. Tell me about the Imperial City. Oh, I miss it so. And it misses me, I am sure. A grand place, but I fear I shall never see it again. Even the mention of the name brings sorrow to Minister Sheng's heart. Please, let us discuss some other topic. Recollecting the grandeur of the Imperial City in these mean and meager surroundings is too cruel a tragedy to bear. Farewell, Minister Sheng. Yes, yes, go and leave Minister Sheng alone to ponder his troubles. Now go close the Great Dam, and I never said that. <laughs> Hopefully nobody around here is listening to our conversations, or he's going to be in big trouble. Not sure why he still has the arrow, or the other symbol, I guess because... He's important. I presume we have all the quests that we were going to get from him. Yeah, that guy still has that too. So maybe that just means like a quest giver or an important person and not necessarily somebody who has something yet to talk about. Part of me wants to just get the show on the road and go out and start actually doing some work to uh, solve these issues. We do have the key. We can go back to the dam. We can go to the Great Forest. We could go talk to Rue the Boatswain and have him take us to the pirates, which... Honestly, those are our three main branches of the quest at this point. Um, but there is still some town to explore first. Greetings, stranger. I noticed you speaking with Minister Shang. I wonder if I could have a moment of your time. Who are you? I am Merchant Jiang, wine seller. I serve the community by entertaining these sailors trapped in our town. I need the help of someone with a steely eye and a steady hand. What's, it seems to me that you are making a killing off of the situation. I simply feel a need the best way I can. What is the crime in that? Now, if you're looking for a little extra coin, I really need some help. Uh, depends what the help is. I wonder if he's going to like try to incentivize me not to close the dam, but I, I don't recall if you have a choice or not. This is a buyer game, so there's actually a good chance that we will have a choice. Also, what is going on with those brick textures in the background? They're all like sideways. So where does your wine come from? The town is cut off. Yeah, and the Great Forest, from what I hear, is very dangerous to traverse these days. We all must have our little secrets. How I conduct my trade is mine. Now I need the help of someone with discretion. Hmm. I guess they leave it up to the imagination, but I could see maybe him doing business with the pirates, giving them a cut of the profits for uh, them helping him out. Someone who knows how to keep their mouth shut and recognize a good deal. Someone who likes silver. Lots of silver. Does this sound like you? Well, let's hear the offer first. What sort of help do you need? This is an excellent time to be a wine merchant. The sailors trapped in our town were on the river for quite a long while, and they had saved up massive amounts of silver. They made me a rich man, but they still have much silver to spend, and I have a large enough supply of wine to last many moons before my stocks run dry. I saw you speaking with Minister Shang, worthy one. I suspect he asked you to go out to the Great Dam and close it. Am I right? It's not your business. 
Pretend for a moment he did ask you. Pretend for a moment he did ask you. He probably talked about saving the town, but I bet he offered you nothing for your services. I offer more. If the great dam closes, the water level rises, and these sailors will float away with all their silver. It would be a ridiculous waste of a golden business opportunity. I want you to destroy the controls of the great dam, leaving it forever open. Then there will be no danger of some adventure coming by and closing it. Alright, so it sounds like you do have a choice here. You can doom the town for some silver, which is a choice that I would obviously not take anyway, but it's even easier because we know that um, the captain of the ship is presumably going to give us a reward anyway, so maybe it's not nearly as good as this guy's reward, but hey, that's better than nothing, and I would have saved the town for nothing anyway. I'm not going to doom this entire town. Don't be so dramatic. I know some think the river situation is fatal, but they are overreacting. They cannot adapt to the new realities. It's hard to adapt when there's no economy to be had. If the Great Dam remains open, the town will consolidate a bit. That might be a good thing. Either way, the smart ones who plan for their future will be fine. If you perform this service for me, I will pay you 20% of my profits to date. Rest assured, it is a very substantial sum. What if I expose your plan? It's not really illegal, so... I don't, and there's not anybody who would really do anything anyway. Who would, Mr. Sheng? You have no proof I asked you. It is my word against yours. Who will they believe, a stranger or a respected merchant? So this is the closed fist one. So I like that there is like a three-pronged choice here. You can do the open palm, I want no part of this. The uh, selfish, evil option, very well I'll do it. Or the actual closed fist, I'll help not for the silver. The town will be made stronger if it survives. Um, since our character, of course, is the follower of the open palm, we want no part of this. No need to rush the decision, just keep it in mind. 20% of my profit to date, remember that. I mean, for all the business he's going to do, you think it'd be like 40 or 50. Maybe you can negotiate a better sum? I know you can in some Bioware games, but uh, not sure if we'll have the option or not, and we will probably never find out, at least not in this Let's Play, because... I do not plan on taking him up on his offer. I like that his fists go up when he like approaches the fence. Like, I am about to punch this fence, except I can't because I'm not in combat. Little shanty up here. Someone told me ghosts aren't real. And he died in his sleep. Weird, huh? Strange coincidence. Alright, now we're back with this area over here. Already been down to that pier. So there's the boathouse over there we can explore. I seem to recall there being two other very interesting townspeople over here somewhere. Maybe up on this hill. Up, oh, I think I see them. These are definitely two you want to spend a moment or two talking to, Here even if one does speak no fan. No Another game, though, or do you tire of losing? You play too conservatively, though. You must be bold when playing a game of ye. Did I teach you nothing? You taught me much, Xi'an, but the most valuable lessons were learning where you were wrong. Seventeenth square of the lion, if you please. Hmm. A wise move, but you know you cannot win. You stalled this game the way you hesitated to learn of, of harmonic combinations. You must be bold, though. You are being rude, Xi'an. We have a guest. Let us place the game on hold a moment. I was doing my best to ignore you too. Very well, what do you want from Jian the Iron Fist or Mistress Vo? If you are here for training, I refuse. What exactly are you two doing? We are having our game of Yi interrupted. Playing without the board or pieces is hard enough without some stranger interrupting. Surely you know of Yi, the capturing game? Played on a board of 19 rows and columns, the black and white pieces capture territory for their player. So risk meets chess meets go? We have simply decided to do away with the board. If one is properly focused, it is not so hard to keep the game in one's mind. Yeah... 19 by 19 is a lot of possibilities. Even if it was like checkers, that would be a lot to remember. Let alone a... A game that sounds much more complicated than checkers. Um, I, mean, I suppose there's like mnemonic devices and things you could use if you're experienced at it, but you'd also think if you do this all day, you would get the games confused. What if you have to happen to like take a break or go to the bathroom or, you know, God forbid, come back and continue the game the next morning? I, I really find it hard to believe that anyone would be able to um, do this much. Now, maybe there are people in real life who can do mental chess. I wouldn't be too shocked by that, I would guess. But um, 
I don't know. It seems to me more like a way for the game developers to uh, cut out having to put a game board here. Or just to make these guys seem wise and powerful, which they're clearly trying to do. Um, I was going to say something else, but I don't remember what it was. Oh, I also expect that when you play a mental game like this, where there's nobody else watching, it could very easily lead to disputes. You know, you take out somebody's pawn or whatever, and my pawn wasn't there, he was there. No, he was there. Well, there's no board of physical pieces, so that's it. Like, if you, even if it's an honest disagreement, nobody's trying to cheat the other, you're going to misremember something at some point, and I'm way overthinking this again, I know. But anyway, my recommendation if you ever play a game of strategy is use an actual board and don't just try to do it mentally. I don't think it would end well. What kind of training can you two offer? Okay, fuck it. None! Oh, God, Too many people way, to seek our guidance. Do not be so hasty, Jian. You did not turn me aside all those years ago. <laughs> look where it got him. Not at all. Yeah, not and look where that got us. Me. Your foolish devotion to the way of the open palm drove you from my tutelage and made you weak. No more. End of subject. So, here is a, uh, another nice example of a follower of the open palm and a follower of the closed fist. And somebody who actually adheres to the philosophies and isn't just, like, straight up evil. Um, huh, I guess we can't get training from them yet. I'm not sure what we have to do to get the training. I have some questions about Tien's landing. Yeah, ask them of someone who cares. Forgive him. Had my former master bothered to remember his manners, he might have told you that we are not from Tien's landing. We know little of the events here. The Empire posted a minister to look after this place. Sheng is his name, I think. Pester him if you must know of this place. Oh, I already did. Um, I guess that's it. I'll leave you two to your game. He on the Iron Fist isn't honestly going to let this one walk away, is he? If you don't say anything, then I will, you old goat. As much as it pains me, though, is right. I see potential in you. Greater strength than the dozens of worms who compete for my favor. I, too, see strength, but also the capacity for understanding the world and your place in it. You could prove an interesting pupil. So, I'm kind of surprised, I'm not too surprised about him, but I'm a little surprised she hasn't tried to do more for the town if she is truly a follower of the Open Palm. Why hasn't she gone to the dam to try to close it? Now would she actually be a match for any of the Lotus Assassins? Maybe one-on-one? -on -one? I don't know how powerful she is, but against all of them, probably not. Um, but still, it does be the question, why hasn't she tried to help out these people yet? Why is she here playing Mental Yi with her old master all day? Um, does this mean you will train me? I will make you an offer. Show me that you understand every nuance of the way of the closed fist, and I will teach you how to bend the storms to your will through tempest. He would like nothing more than to have you as a student. But show me that you walk the way of the open palm, and I will teach you the mysteries of Stone Immortal. We will be here for some time, if you wish either of our tutelage, but do not ask us to guide you on your path. Learning the ways on your own is the most important lesson. All right, those I already learned from, uh, I guess, Smiling Mountain and Master Lee. So we will continue following the way of the open palm, and once we get enough points in the open palm, I suppose she will teach us. Um, Tempest and Stone Immortal are the other two magic styles in the game. There are only four in total. Uh, Ice Shard, Dire Flame, and those two. Um, I, Tempest, I remember being pretty cool, but we are not going to follow the way of the Closed Fist. And I think Stone Immortal is actually also pretty interesting. Um, we will definitely pick up that one at some point. This might have been the point of the game, too, where I was so excited to get, like, a wind magic style that I just decided, my very first character, just to go all out closed fist. I don't really recall when that happened, but that sounds vaguely familiar. But, um, regardless, Stone Immortal will be our path. And I think it's a pretty cool ability. So I'm looking forward to using it and maybe even investing in it if, uh, we like what we see. Since I haven't played the game in forever, I don't remember too much about the spe specifics of these styles and which ones I really liked or didn't like. But that's part of the fun of relearning the game again. In a way, I actually very much enjoy um, playing the game semi-fresh like this, as opposed to just playing it if I had, say, just played it. Sealed gate. These gates are sealed shut and will never open. Alright, well, that answers that. There's a flag on the other side, though. Wonder what that means. There's people there. I guess I have to go around this way to get to them? That's weird that there's a gate here that will never open. 
you would think that at least like lore wise they would say that he's not open or that it seems stuck shut or you know the fact that how does this omniscient narrator or whatever it is i guess if it's omniscient that's why but it's just very weird that the like your observation of this gate is that it will never open, which is kind of what I thought these pop-ups were. Merchant area, Mr. Shang, the mister, the old master's boathouse. So arrows mean a different area, their own zone. All right, so let's go around here. I don't really remember Ruse Barge. I guess I do remember vaguely this area, but it will probably come back to me, as most things do. And then once we do that, we can... Uh, the boathouse actually might have some fighting in there. I don't really remember what is involved inside there. We'll find out. Big Tian. Look at all these people here. When my old father told me to come to the big city, he never warned me about the crowds. <laughs> these are crowds? This is a big city? Yeah. You think Tian's Landing is a big city? This must be from a very small farm. Back on the farm, I ain't never seen so many people and buildings in one place. Except for livestock. But I guess they ain't people. Or buildings. That they are not. It was, um... I don't know where I read it, but... An interesting musing about how, in olden times, many people didn't have an idea of what a real amount of people was. What it, a thousand people, for example, looked like. Because... Most people never saw a hundred people gather together, let alone a thousand or thousands. Um, the only one that may have had any idea would be, I think, uh, they mentioned somebody who cleaned the church windows. I don't know why you would clean the church window, like the rose window, while there were people in it. But um, maybe the guy who rang the bell, maybe on his way up, he could look down and see a crowd of a thousand people in one of the larger cathedrals. But it's true that nowadays seeing a crowd of hundreds of thousands is not that big of a deal at a concert or a sporting event. Um, or a big political event, but back in these days, seeing even a couple dozen gather together was a really big deal. So who are you? My name's Tian, but everyone calls me Big Tian because I'm so big. I came to the city to try to find me a wife. So far, it's not going so good. Aw. You wouldn't happen to know any pretty young gals, would you? Someone who'd want to come live on the farm with me? Uh, he's not the um, smartest guy around, but he seems earnest at least. Um, I'm sure there's somebody in this town who would uh, make him a good wife, unlike that other guy in the um, tea house. You know, I wonder if they're. I wonder if this is all part of a quest. And I think it might have to do with um, that one lady we met, Sweet Something. I wonder if the idea of these quests is you can set her up with one of these guys, and you kind of have to help her select which one. Um, it'd be cool if there were actually like three eligible women in town and three guys and you could match them up or choose which ones not to match up if there were some that didn't that weren't very nice people but um, I think that's a little more complicated than what this quest actually is so he does seem like a nice guy but I, I don't know she seemed a little too smart for him is that rude to say um, maybe that would make them a good couple then because she could handle like the finances and stuff and he could work the farm or whatever um, I mean, I could see worse couples, but we will also have to keep an eye out for other potential suitors. Uh, yeah, I don't know any eligible women. Well, that's a real shame. If you run across any nice gals, do me a favor and mention my name to them. Big Tian. You have a nice day now. Yeah, I definitely would rather recommend him than uh, the other guy. But ultimately, it's got to be what's her name's choice anyway. Another day, another bowl of rice, I hope. The Cataclysm. Many tales circulate of the travels of the water people, but one of the most disturbing tales comes from far to the west, beyond the ocean of Tempest. Oh, I like this. So we have a hint now about the greater world. Um, I don't actually remember much about what we find out about the greater world, and they are obviously only rumors and myths, because people from Tian's Landing in these areas haven't traveled very far at all, even in the Empire, let alone beyond it. But um, being a port town, it makes sense that they would hear some garbled tales. And uh, it's an interesting way to flesh out the world and, again, set up potential for a future sequel, if that ever has any chance of happening. 
Rumors persist of an area in the middle of the Western Ocean that is inhospitable to life. The farther one travels across the Ocean of Tempest, the warmer the climate becomes. Many have postulated that this may be because you approach the resting place of the sun, but there must be another explanation, not shrouded in myths and superstition. Well, this is a, a fantasy world, so the myths and superstition could be true. But that's interesting. So I, the west, or was the west? Yeah, the west is warm, not the north or south, which would make more sense. Um, like in North America, where I am, you go south when it gets warm. Dragon Age is interesting because the main locations are in the southern hemisphere. So the north, or sorry, the south is actually cold. Kind of flips it on its head, as if you were in like South America or... Um, Southern Africa. Although I don't know if South Africa gets that cold. I always think of it being warm. But, I mean, it is the very southern cape of Africa. I'm not sure what the climate is like there. Um, anyway. Of particular note are reports of an enormous cloud that rises miles into the air, visible to those few brave enough to travel the increasingly rough seas of Tempest. At night, this cloud glows with heat, and its acrid smell carries on the wind. Those who approach too closely fall ill. A few ghost ships found in that area were filled with desiccated corpses, their skin rotting and their hair and teeth falling from their bodies. One particularly disturbing log, penned in the shaking hand of a dying captain of one of these craft, suggests that the skies were filled with a roar like the cries of the gods, and it finishes with the unfortunate man's wish that death take him before the howling demons descend upon him. It sounds very interesting. So maybe it's a magical storm or a, a portal to a different world? Who knows what that could be, but definitely nice setup for... Um, Again, an expansion or sequel that has not yet happened. And we get some XP. Oh, you know what? I should actually probably not read these yet, because I'm pretty sure there's a gem you can get that like doubles your XP from reading stuff. And I think you actually get it in that area over there we haven't been to yet. It's funny the little things you do remember in a game. That, or I might be confusing it with those shops in Denerim and Dragon Age, which also were kind of in that direction if this was Denerim. If that makes sense for those of you who have either played Dragon Age or watched my Let's Play. And if you haven't, you should, FYI. Um, but we'll see if I'm confusing the games or if there actually is a gem over there with the merchant. This guy appeared as I got closer to him. This is a nice little fishing area. Reminds me of some piers I have been to in real life. Of course, the lakes and um, bays there are not quite as shallow. You can see here, though, the river actually does get... Yeah, a little wide. It's not completely dried up. So that must be how uh, Rue is going to take us to the pirates. Although, oh, those are probably just reeds. Yeah, they're just reeds. Very poorly rendered and blocky reeds. But, hey, it's 2005. I'm not going to be too critical of them. Ghosts bring wind. Wind is no friend to a river fisherman, oh. I can tell you that. So I guess they all kind of say the same few things. No matter if it's this fisherman or the other fisherman. I'm okay with that, though. There's only so many lines they can afford to produce, and um, chances are you won't just stand there and talk to the same guy over and over again. You'll go around and talk to each of them once, in which case you would hear a bunch of different stuff. Alright, can't go that way. Luckily, we can sneak down this way. Oh, are these the pirates? Hey, Baker Bay. How are you today? Oh, Baker Bay. Go away! I told you I want no part of this. Tell Ai Ling to leave me alone. If you want to tell Ai Ling something, go tell her yourself. It's a little personal with Sorry. me. I like sticking your face in the gutter. Hold on a sec. We've got company. You're a little too interested in our business, friend. I uh, I, for some reason, the window... It's just losing focus there. Remember how to fight now. Block, 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 block! See, you can't block when you're in, being attacked by... Okay. Let's heal up. You know what? Let's see how this goes. Can I heal? I not heal. Because I'm in chi mood. Oh, they can kill you while you transform. That's good to know. So, pros and cons to transformation styles then. Um, did it save a second ago? I think it might have. I really hope it might have, because I really don't want to do all that again. Wow. So it didn't save, 
And I am back here. Uh, where I started playing today, I guess. That sucks. Okay, we'd already done the tea house there, right? My yeah, I I saved hero that. returns. Remember, you're <sighs> always welcome. All right, well, I guess we actually didn't do too much. We did a lot of talking. So what I'll probably do is... um. I did find a few gems and things, didn't I? Well, that really sucks. I guess I should save even as I'm playing these Let's Plays. Usually I only save in between episodes. And I didn't save in between the last one because we were in the middle of talking to Minister Shang. And I totally... I, I backed out the conversation anyway. I could have just saved right there. That would have saved me at least a, a decent chunk of trouble. Um... There's a cutscene over there. Let's just kind of go around. Can I go up here? Oh, I can. That's cool. Doesn't really go anywhere, but it's a cool idea nonetheless. I guess this town was a little more fortified at one point. All right, so let's head over to the other area. We'll fight those guys again. And off camera, I'll go through and basically repeat everything that we just did. I don't think it'll take me that long. Maybe just like 10 minutes, but still, it's just annoying that I have to do that. All right, so notes to self. I think what I need to do is make a decision during combat about dodging versus blocking. I always start taking blows, and my first thought is I'm supposed to block now. But when I try to block, I can't because I'm getting interrupted by their series of attacks. And because of that, I take a ton of damage before I can block. And at that point, I'm just thrown off low on health and not in a good spot. So um, what I recall about this game is that dodging is more effective than blocking anyway. And staying out of range is obviously the most effective. So... Let's give that a try. I want to start in um, let's start in Leaping Tiger. I don't like using Fortune's Favorite because it's so powerful, but we'll see how it goes. All right. Go. Bay. If you want to tell I Ling something, go tell her yourself. In the meantime, we have our orders. Nothing personal. It's a little personal with me. I like sticking your face in the gutter. Hold on a sec. We've got company. You're a little too interested in our business, friend. Looks like we gotta teach you to back off when Ai Ling's boys are working. So I guess on the bright side... See, now I'm back in Ice Shard. I don't know what's with that. Okay. These are very confined spaces. Not sure how far we can go, though. Switch to Heavenly All right, nice. All right, so uh, Heavenly Wave is actually kind of useful. Not sure I'll put any points into it, but. Can you believe that these thugs would just attack me in broad daylight like that? Yeah, there's no real guard in this they, town. Just they that might have one guy. Me if you hadn't stepped in. Thank you. I never expected such help from a stranger. Uh, actually, Lan sent me to help you. You spoke to Lan? How humiliating. A little bit. My fiancé must have told you I can't protect myself. The woman I love doesn't have faith in me? Oh, the shame. I'll never live this down. She's just worried about you. Yes, you, yes, you're right, of course. I suppose I can't fault Lan for being worried about me. I've taken some serious beatings lately. I didn't mean to sound ungrateful. I'm just worried about Lan. She's very emotional. I've done my best to try and keep her from becoming involved in this. It'd be cool if you could like take a little time and actually like teach him a style and help him defend himself, but... I don't think that's the direction this quest is going. Involved in what exactly? Those thugs are acting on Eiling's orders. She's the head of their gang. They have a small hideout in the boathouse. Eiling and I were friends when we were children, but we drifted apart as we grew up. She fell in with some rough people, as you've already seen. Oh, I remember this. Ever since I got engaged, Eiling has become obsessed with me. Every day, she sends her thugs to beat me up. She says she won't stop until I go talk to her. So why don't you talk to her? She's obviously crazy. I've done nothing to her. 
We haven't even spoken in years. If I go to her hideout to talk to her, I'm afraid that I'll never come out. A reasonable fear? At least the beatings on the street are out in public. They won't kill me in front of witnesses. Well, not on purpose, anyway. Yeah, makes sense. So hopefully I can uh, escort him in there and see what this is about. I get the feeling you're not telling me something. I'm being completely honest, I swear. I... I know how this looks. You must think I've done something to deserve this, but I have no idea why Eiling is after me. Have you told any of this to Lan? No. Lan's very emotional. I didn't want her to get upset. At first, I didn't tell her anything at all. But I couldn't hide my bruises forever. So I told her about the beatings. But even then, I didn't mention Ai Ling. It's bad enough what's happening to me. I was afraid if Lan became more involved, Ai Ling might hurt her too. Maybe I could talk to Ai Ling for you. Thank you so much. Ai Ling and her thugs are in the boathouse. Please just ask her to leave me alone. All we want is to live our lives in peace. A reasonable request. All right, well, we will go talk to Ai Ling in the next episode. It's a shame that I died the first time because we probably would have had enough XP from all these conversations to level up again. But uh, like I said, off screen and probably tomorrow, I will go around and catch back up to where we are. And hopefully by then we'll be able to level up when we come back. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you have an excellent night and I will see you all tomorrow.